My name's Roger Gay. I, I used to work in this area as a game warden. I'm an avid fly fisherman and I grew up fishing remote ponds like this in Maine. And um, so what I've learned is, over the years is, you know, the, you have to have some basic things, some basic knowledge, and you have to be able to uh, have these to enjoy your time out there. For example, a decent net. These nets are much better than the old style nets where the fish would get all tangled up into it and damage its gills and damage its skin. This is what you really want to have. A decent fly rod. This is a six weight rod. It's perfect for pond fishing and small rivers and streams as well. And this one is set up with floating line. If you're starting out fly fishing, I really recommend learning how to use it with, with, with floating line. And the next phase, which is the most unique and fun phase of fly fishing is learning what the fish are eating, matching the hatch, trying to figure out what it is. And it's a chess game, literally, of figuring out what's the food of the day for them. So from experience, having grown up in this region and, and, and knowing a little bit about fishing, when I come to a pond like this and I'm not seeing a lot of surface activity, um, my go-to fly would be a, a muddler a muddler minnow fly. It can look like several different flies that usually this time of year are on the water. I usually start with that so I can get a handle on what the fish are doing. For example, if you have a mayfly on the surface, you're gonna see the trout will actually come up and sip it versus a caddis fly that's skittering on the top. The fish is gonna do a jump and come on, on top of it. So all these are clues to the, to the mystery of Mr. Brook Trout. And it'll change from one day to the other. It'll change from one hour to another as the, as the cycle of the day goes through. So, so that's always the big mystery when you, you're fly fishing and that's what makes it really so much fun.